I think the, as you said, the counterculture played an important influencing role on Silicon Valley, particularly in the early years, the kind of insurgent phase of Silicon Valley, uh, and particularly in the 60s and 70s when it's developing the foundations of personal computing. Right In that era, the computer is the mainframe. It takes up an entire building, essentially. And the ideas of the counterculture and the ideas of human potential and kind of this language of humanism is very important for early Silicon Valley in thinking through how to humanize the machine, right? how to bring the computer back down to the personal level. Uh, and of course, that unlocks a business model that has been hugely profitable. I mean, it's the basis not only for a company like Apple, but for social media, for the internet. Um, so in a, in a certain sense, the counterculture has already played its most important role. I think it lingers, its legacy certainly lingers, uh, but it's, it's, it's already served its function in an important way. But I think one thing that's interesting about the counterculture, even of the 60s in the Bay Area, is that for the most part, it's a pretty apolitical counterculture in a certain sense. That's right, right? That's fair. I mean, it develops sort of in conscious reaction to more explicitly socialist or collectivist leftist movements. It is very focused on personal self-expression and discovery. It often takes the form of sort of, you know, they're very interested in the commune form, these communities that in one sense are leaving traditional society behind, but on the other sense, sorry, in another sense, sort of replicate the dynamics of, and they're very white, they're very focused on men. Uh, in a way, they're very traditional, and I think that that paradox uh, of, the, of the 60s counterculture in the Bay Area, this uh, paradox that it's oppositional and yet in many ways very apolitical lingers on in the way that, say, Facebook allows each of us to express our individual opinion but claims itself to be neutral and not to have a politics. It's a very particular kind of vision and I think in retrospect is very easily co-optable by capitalism, or it's, it's, it becomes a great engine for business uh, in which it, everything comes down to a kind of personal expression on the platforms uh, without systemic change. And I think the sad irony is that the economies of big tech now mean that countercultures that historically, other kinds of movements that uh, flourished in the Bay Area, many of them can't afford to be there anymore. The reality of Silicon Valley now, as we know, is that it's dominated by a handful of very large companies. Um, even that kind of figure of the individual entrepreneur, there's, there's kind of a lot of myth around that. But the reality today is that you know, many startups are acquired at their early stages by these very big companies like Google and Facebook. The mystification of tech as if it's not an industry, as if it's a humanitarian mission, when in fact it's you know, an industry within a capitalist system. They, as you said, serve shareholders. They maximize profitability. Um, I think we have a lot more to learn about understanding the tech industry as an industry and the perspectives that that unlocks for us. For us, I think for me, it's, it's always a difficult question of on the one hand, this technology has opened up new ways of existing together, new types of collectivities, which is very appealing and can be very emancipatory, particularly in a political context. On the other hand, there are real kind of questions about how do we want to design these technologies? Maybe certain of them shouldn't exist. I mean, maybe Facebook shouldn't exist, right? I think for us, the question always comes down to who owns these machines and what function do they serve? And I think trying to understand the political economy of these machines, that they exist within a capitalist system and are produced for the purpose of profitability, I think that has to be our starting point, I think, to, to really understand why these things exist the way they do and for us to maybe imagine a different way of organizing them along different principles. For me, at the end of the day, it's not so much this ontological or metaphysical question about the technology, it's this political question about how we want it to be organized, uh, and that involves contesting power over who owns and builds, uh, who owns and builds it. Oh!